Hey guys, William here with Shadowtronics, uh, coming to you on uh, Father's Day Sunday, just taking it easy, uh, trying to stay cool. It is really warm out here in North Carolina today. i uh, got a cool little project I'm working on. i um, going to be uh, using a, an Arduino Mega uh, board to program, to in-system program an Amiga AT Tiny 85, which is uh, an 8 pin dip. Um, let me show that to you guys. Position. Go. Drink that so you guys can see. Um, as you see, I've not got any uh, donations or anything yet to help me get a webcam. Um, you know, it's not required for any of my videos, I don't run commercials. I don't monetize my videos, so every little bit of every little bit of help I can get goes right back into the stream, into the website, guys. So if you can, uh, check out the links below to my Streamlabs page, and you know if if you can give a buck or two, it would be really appreciated. But like I said, it's totally not necessary or required. Uh, we just love uh, DIY and doing electronics and uh, furthering knowledge of people. So with that going on, uh, let me show you what we got going here. Ignore my Facebook. I don't know why that's still up. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, the Arduino website has a really good tutorial on how to set this up. Uh, the benefits of this is if you buy chips blank, uh, you know they don't have a bootloader, they don't have an operating system, um, or the code you write. Uh, well, how the Arduino bootloader works is it allows you to upload code through the serial port right at boot uh, when you apply power to the chip. Well, if you buy the chips blank, you don't have that bootloader to be able to do that. So you have to do, um, uh, you need to program it uh, with either a bootloader or you don't even have to use a bootloader. You can upload your sketch directly to the chip and as soon as you hit that power, your program starts immediately. Um, also, the bootloader takes up some of your memory space. So if you need just that extra 512 bytes, it says there, um, let's say your program is two bytes short. You know, you could always use the in-system programmer and push your code directly to the chip. And that's what I'm, I'm going to experiment. I'm working on a couple projects where I want to experiment with that. Okay, the most common Arduino board you know is the Uno. Um, you can use those; they work great. Um, they're cheap. The at Mega 328P chip is cheap as chips. Uh, you can get them for a dollar a piece or less. Um, even cheaper is the uh, AT Tiny series. Uh, a lot less pins, um, very user specific. Uh, if you have something that you only need two, you need uh, two outputs. Why well, use the 328 that has? Oh shoot, how many does it have? 13, five. Oh shoot, I done forgot. It has a lot of pins. Let's put it that way. Uh, but let's say you only need two. There, um, you can save space on your board and on cost. And so today I'm going to be using the Atomiga AT Tiny 85 to the tutorial at Arduino.cc. Uh, go to their site under recent, I think it's uh, resources and tutorials, and you'll find it as Arduino as ISP, in system programmer. All right. Um, our target, like I said, is going to be the AT Tiny 85. So we'll need to get the pin out for the 85 on how to hook up the programming lines. Um, I'm actually using an Instructables by TJS J Wang. Here's the design for the PCB and the, the final wire up. Uh, we're not just there yet. We want to get the files to actually program the chip, and then we'll uh, worry about doing the virtual USB. Okay, here's our pinout. This is what I was looking for. Um, let me go back here to get the data sheet. VCC is on pin 8. Uh, ground is on pin 4. Reset is pin 1. 
Okay, that's what I wanted to make sure. All right, here's our pins. Uh, looks like serial clock is on pin seven, pin six is Mizo, and Mozzie is on five. Okay, and so, of course one is reset. Uh, good warning there. Um, the way they're setting up the fuses is it's going to disable reset, which is what you need to, for, to make it a programmer. Says you have to get this right the first time, or you'll need a high voltage programmer to uh, erase the chip. So let's go grab the, the files we need from here, and I'll have these up on my side also, um, and they'll have there'll be uh, links in the description below. Put that on my desktop, All right? Go to my desktop. See my uh, lovely Miss Shadow towing here, and our pup Cheyenne, who is now across the Rainbow Bridge. Oh, we miss him every day. All right, we'll extract this folder. Easy peasy. Bring it over here where I can see it. Go. And. Oh wow, he included uh, pictures of each step. That's really nice. Uh, let me get a schematic. We get a readme here. Which okay, it just says um, what commands to run. Okay, not a problem. That's not the, uh, Lord, that's, that's a horrible looking workout, but hey, it, it, it would do the job. Hmm. Uh-oh, what did I do here? Somehow we opened Inkscape, Inkscape's website. Uh, really not sure what we did there. Okay. Get all this out again. Uh, here. Okay, we got our files for the hex files. Um, I'll be back in just a moment. I've got to finish wiring up the board. And as you can see, we can go back to our picture here. And I'm going to be wiring this up uh, just like this, except the target is the AT Tiny on a breadboard. Um, I'll have pictures um, over here. Uh, in a box, hopefully, if I can get everything to work. All right, um, so I'm gonna pause the video here and I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, guys, we have success, it, it does work. We call the program AVR Dude and we have to tell it its global configuration file, which is dash capital C and then this big long thing. I'll show you how I found that in just a moment. Uh, the programmer is stk 500 v1 that's the tells it that it's an arduino as isp pcom 6 tells you what tells it where where the board is at on which com port you're on uh dash b tells it what baud rate to use which was uh 19200 uh dash p tells you what chip you want to program and dash u tells you where uh, tells it where to flash and what file to use which we got from earlier and now I'm going to flash this again so you guys can see it. Um, I have a, a green blinking light, means that the programmer is ready. So all I did do is hit enter and it should program it. Alright, I got blue light, means it's got data. And it verifies. And I got a green light saying that it's done. And if you see, safe mode diffuses are okay. One last thing we have to do is set the fuses on this chip to disable the reset um, so that um, it'll work as a programmer. So we have this command up here. Um, and of course it looks like I'm going to be uh, changing 
some of the commands here too. So we'll drop that in. Okay, yeah, it's missing the configuration file. So, um, what I'm going to do is so uh, that I can see that I'm just going to push up and I'm going to edit um, this line just to make it easier. Okay, we know da uh, dash u needs to be changed to e fuse colon right colon 0x ff dash m you can check the arduino uh, dot cc website under tutorials uh, i think they talk about the fuses there i'm uh, not a hundred percent sure on uh, what zero x ff does i know it disables reset and so this chip is going to be forever now is going to be a programmer um i don't particularly like that idea um, I may see if I can do one and do the uh, the capacitor jump like we do on the Mega and the Uno. Okay, uh, dash P is going to be AT1985. Um, the programmer still should stay the same. And yeah, that should be all I have to change. All right, let's see what happens. Okay, um, all right, it looks like it's programmed. So I hope you guys liked that little um, video there on setting up an Arduino as an ISP and programming an AT Tiny eighty five uh, to be a, another programmer. Come by our website at shadowtronics.org. Check out our YouTube channel. Um, like, subscribe, uh, leave a comment if you have any questions. Check the description box under the show more tab uh, for the links and some high res pictures and stuff and links to the files. Uh, come by our live stream. Um, it's going to be Monday through Thursday at 11 a.m. Thereabouts. Uh, days and times may change due to my schedule. Uh, that's over at mixer.com forward slash shadow towing. Check our website for more details on that, and everybody have a blessed day.